going to be drawing Mabel as an example to show you how I do it. And let me just get it on my screen. So, I can more or less see. Right, first of all, we need to start always with the head end. We never start with the body end. It doesn't work that way. You get the proportions right that way. And you start with two circles. Since we're doing Mabel and she's a puppy, she's going to be a bit more chunky. So, if I can see well, position her. She's going to be landscape. She's going to have a head end here and a body end here. And this is the aperture. So this is the painted box. This is the excess, which will be for framing. We'll start with, and I warn you, I will probably use the rubber a lot. Because I make thousands of mistakes. We have head circle, which she is facing me at an angle, so I will do a line down the centre. That is the centre of the circle, which means the centre from the top of her forehead down to her nose. And here we'll do another circle. This is the snout, which I will move. It will move, always move, always change. And I'll probably make another mistake in a minute. This is her nose which will again probably move later. I'm just going to do a line there just so know the nose kind of bends. Right. That's the top of her head. I'll do a line there pointing down. That's the, the end of the nose. <coughs> and here are the beginnings of her mouth. Now I'm going to give her a smile. So we'll lift that up like that and bend. Always bend here and then a flick gives a smile. Do the same on the other side. Which that already looks silly, so I'm gonna change that in a minute. But first I'm gonna extend that. And go down here. Dogs, they have this little under lip. So we're gonna do that for now. Her lip they go over slightly. So you'd see the the jawline would begin over there. Group down here. Now eyes. I always use these lines here as a guide for eyebrows. Dogs don't have eyebrows, but they do have the muscles that work as eyebrows. So point that like that. And then you point out it doesn't really work like that in dogs for real, but as a cartoon it does. So you go like so. Again here, rub first time I'm using the rubber to remove that. Quite a large cheek. Go up a bit. I'm changing this as you can see, I'm changing as I go. That is also wrong. Right. So this technically is the eyebrow line. Now the eyebrow line goes round, round like so, so the underneath would be the base of the eyes and that goes up. Here the eyebrow line, the point, just above it is where ears start. Obviously they won't look like that, I'm just doing it as a guide. Right, this mouth I already don't like, so we're going to move that. I'm moving it again. Puppies are quite hard to draw. Right, so we need to put in the other jaw line. Should be around there somewhere. In fact, this bottom jaw, I'm going to extend a bit. I'm going to cheat, as they so call. I'm going to cheat and then do a f an imaginary line here. This is an imaginary line, so I know where the jawline goes. From this jaw here, chin bit actually, I'm going to draw... This is difficult because I'm changing everything. I'm using two photo references and I'm splicing them together. That would be a neck... I call it a neck circle, but it's actually the muscle. That would be a shoulder 
this should be a bit lower and this is a back line by the shoulder breast bone that's the little indentation which proves yeah that's the bone arm leg I do um, so from the shoulder dot so that's the shoulder dot they join they need to be more or less the same level so that's not right there down to elbow and off page you wouldn't see it that would be the forearm although I don't like that I might actually bring them up in this case you're going to see rest the forearm so elbow shoulder elbow wrist paw shoulder elbow would be at this angle there forearm wrist paw that would be the flesh of the elbow shoulder back this here would be the back leg, thigh, butt end, round it off. Now, fleshing this bit out. Pause, I always do this weird, like, strange shaped triangle. And then that is the, um, so I would say the bend in your arm, the same bend in the dog, different place. Back arm, elbow. I go over things a lot. And then I can't see very well, so I'm going to have to get rid of that. So breastbone, shoulder. And if I do a lot of this, it's because I've lost what I was doing and get confused. So shoulder, elbow. Arm. I'm just going to try it like this, see if this works. So that would be four. Wrist. Yep. So you wouldn't see that bit because it's behind the neck. This line here, the front of the shoulder. So that's neck into shoulder. Lift this a bit up more. Shorten that. I always flick from one side to another as well, so I, I'm going to add an imaginary background and I think I'm going to add some bedding. Sometimes when something doesn't work, I just hide it. <laughs> it's a good way, honestly. I just hide it. Right, I need to change photo here because I cannot tell for the life of God what tail she has. Let's have a look. Okay, so that'll do. And another picture. Okay. I'm going to hide it behind here. Right, I'm going to go back to the face now because I'm not actually happy with it. Something's not right. Rub all that out. Yep, I do that. I rub things out when I don't like them. It's a bad habit. Round eyes, nose. I'm going to make the nose larger. I might even put in the eye just to see where everything sits. So eyes are really difficult. I find them horrible. Circles, not even circles. Point, and then round it off. These are only guide eyes. I will go over them again. Nose, I'm just fixing the nose. Round like so. So the eyebrow line is here, and on, on mine I just do little things like that, and then use this line here. So if you imagine the Lion King, for example, it's like the outside guide for the eye, like an eye socket. This part here would be sunk in more. That would be the bridge of the nose, all this here. There. A little less of a, ch a jaw cheek thing going on. Round smile, round smile. Chin. 
invisible line pure pure right and there's a mess going up in here so I'll get rid of that straighten it out round it off here which has got kind of really awkward ears like an upside down triangle we also got furry ears that adds later so get rid of the jawline these ears are quite long like so and add a little tuft so i know where i'm going so it'll be exactly the same on the other side you just measure it obviously some of the ear you won't see so usually I measure like so, but obviously we're at an angle, so it'll go up slightly. And you can use the eyes as a guide as well. There's loads of guides. And then drop the ear. It'll be slightly shorter on this side because of that angle. So you can see that there. Right, so I'm cut her neck a bit more. Right, I'm actually not too upset about those eyes, so I might actually just edit them a little bit and keep it. Quite nice how that's come out. Right, so eye line. Just cleaning them up a bit. Like so. Now she's a female, I believe. So females, I don't for males basically I do like the eye dogs, you know, they do have eyelashes, but it doesn't look like this. That's a male. And for a female, so I just rub off that. So she is a female, is the opposite. I don't know why that works, it just does. We have a flick and a, like a, a wing going off on there. And instantly, obviously, if anybody relates to Disney, you're going to see a female. Now, where do I want her to look? I personally wanted to look off into the distance, so eyes. This overly circle is cut off. That is light, and that is pupil. I sometimes do add another circle down the bottom for light. I don't think it works in this one, so I'm going to get rid of that. So that's the pupil, which I'll colour in just so I know where she's looking. Other part is doing the other eye. In all honesty, eyes are quite. So, you can measure the flick with the other side, more or less, they're not going to be the same. Up a bit, down and in. And the eye as well will be up, it'll be slightly smaller on this side, because you should ideally see less. The light, people, colour that in. Right, so that's the line in the eyes, right. Dogs, they don't have them this apparent, but there's a little line I put in. So you've, it's a membrane anyway. Really dark membrane. And that will close off like so. That's a little bit less round there. Round that up. You can add a line like that. See, it kind of sits on the cheek, which is quite nice. A little tuft in her hair there. Right. I'm going to do a little tiny little dip because the heads are never round right if i get rid of the mid center line because we do not need that guide anymore ideally we don't even need these here anymore i don't usually draw like this i'm doing it for you guys so you see how i do it i used to do it right she has quite a unique nose this puppy so she has a dip Remember, your guideline would be there, so the dip would be there. I also changed the dog shaped noses a little bit. They don't always look like this. So I'm changing it a bit. Some things work as a company, some things don't. Like that. Right, you can get rid of that line. If you want to do the outside line of the nose, I just do two lines, but that one's not working. So I'll do that way. Screen. Ear tuft. 
right this line can go those lines can now go go can go can go that can go the first paint plate i don't go i just leave a tiny tiny little line there so it kind of looks that she's got a lot of fluff and she's got a collar on as well so collars are really kind of don't like collars but i'll do that in a second um, if I add paws, toes, her toes, paws is quite fun because of that shape. We have the little one there, larger one there. The middle, the, the the next large one is the same size as that one, and then the last one will be slightly smaller because it matches this guy here. Mm. I have a message, and that's that. You can separate that a bit so it doesn't look closed off. And then I add little lines in places so the toes look like they're going up. Wrist, arm, elbow, that neck, down to the chest. This would be a little bit of a shoulder on the other side. Other paw, right? That's not correct. So you lift up there. Same on this side. There is another digit on this side, on the inside. Too cool and everything. I just don't. larger toe, larger toe, smaller toe. Balls are finished. Join that there. A little tuft here. Tuft there. She has got some marking. Another message. On here she has a little tough there. This this will be filled in with paint, it's really awkward to put the patterns on otherwise. So it goes like so as a guide. This is all gonna be white with a few patches of brown. She's she's chocolate brown, I believe. Yes. Right, that I'm gonna clean up that. That is the imaginary bedding that I've created. With cartoons, it's really easy to add your own touch. That needs to yes. Right, I'll fill in the line of the eye line of uh, eyelashes there, just so you know where I am. Get rid of that. Really, she's already ready for filling in. And usually, because I'm now using watercolour, it um, doesn't cover very well, so we don't want to see the lines going through. So I usually use my favourite friend in the whole universe, Putty Rubber. So. What we do is we heat that up, stretch it out. Yep. So it's pliable. Roll that into a sausage. And my way is to this will probably scare any artist on the earth is rub it off. So that takes the edge of the graphite away. Just like so. So you can't see the lines under the paint, even though she's going to have an outline. Sometimes I have made mistakes and you still see it. For the outside line, this painted bit here, that has to go. So what I do is, if you can see, I do a line there, a line there, a line there, and a line there. And I just take it away completely. And with a brush for the background. It's literally that. Those lines I get rid of later. At least now I have my guide. Because this will be able to be mounted. I've done it that way. Get rid of that line there. 
but with the background it's quite light coloured so I don't want that showing through it. I mean, you can't rub it off afterwards, it will take off the paint and also rip the paper. So I'm trying to get rid of this line altogether. That one there, that one there, that one there, I think that's pretty much it. I won't be showing the painting stage because I need to really concentrate on that. And it'll take me about a day. So that's it. I do want to let everyone know that I'm bringing forward the competition to the 29th because I don't know where I'm going to be on the 30th and the 31st. So we will do a live broadcast. Me and my partner will do. And announce the three winners. And I will post this up as a post later so you all can read. Sorry about that, but it has to be done because I don't know where I'm going to be. Okay, so that's how we drew Mabel the puppy. And I should catch you all later. Bye!